Another reason to get fat adapted, being able to feel wakeful, perhaps even if you didn't sleep all that well. Look at this is some pretty crazy science that we're starting to unfold here. Now, when you look at the low carb world, it's very easy to just wanna say that ketones do it all, right? That we have more energy and your brain feels good because of these magical ketones that we're creating. And look at, I get it, but it's a little bit overdone now. Okay, there's other things that are going on. And when you start looking at the bodies of research, specifically surrounding fat adaptation, PPAR alpha, circadian clock genes, and how this is all working, you realize there is a lot more going on than just the ketones. It's the fat adaptation. So I wanna talk about something that I had experienced. Like when I'm fat adapted, when I am doing a lower carb protocol a lot and I'm exercising a lot and I'm, I feel like I can get by with less sleep. And now there's some data that somewhat backs that up. So let's take a look. Hey, after this video, check out Unbun. Whether you are doing keto or just low carb or you're just kind of watching your carbs, you have to check them out. They are a supporter and a sponsor on this channel, but they are like, at least in my opinion, the best bread that is out there that you can have on a lower carb protocol. Okay, we're talking made with flax, made with psyllium, made with egg whites. It is delicious. They have bagels, they have tortillas, they have regular bread that toasts like regular bread. I can't even believe it. You put a little bit of ghee on it. It's just delicious. So there is a link down below for you to check them out and get a special discount. I definitely recommend you check them out, but they're also rocking it at Whole Foods. They're just making a huge name for themselves. Again, it's called Unbun, and they are a sponsor on this channel. And if you miss bread, no matter what category you're in, you have got to try them out. So check them out down below in the description, and a big thank you again to Unbun for the support. Okay, we have to reintroduce our friend PPAR Alpha. And I'm going to make this as light, as simple as I can, because I did another video that went into a lot more detail, but I wanna talk more about the fat adaptation piece. PPAR is something that, a switch that is flipped. It's a receptor protein. And when we are deep in ketosis for a long period of time, or we're practicing intermittent fasting for a long period of time, things like that, uh, we get fat adapted. Well, fat adaptation is largely activating PPAR more. Well, now we're seeing some evidence that PPAR isn't just about the metabolism. We don't just have PPAR receptor proteins in our muscle, in our liver, in our fat. We actually have it in our brain too, specifically in the region of our brain that helps regulate our circadian rhythm. So what they're finding out now, and I'll explain in some studies, is that if you activate PPAR, it promotes wakefulness and that means that you can potentially get by with less sleep. Let's explain what this means. There's a study that was published in the journal Brain Research Bulletins, okay? And this looked at rats. And what they did is with these rats, they said, let's go ahead and now that we know that there are PPAR uh, receptors, PPAR in the brain, let's go ahead and activate it. Let's use a synthetic, what is called an agonist. So they used an agonist to activate PPAR alpha or PPAR in the brain. And what they found is that it dramatically promoted wakefulness. Okay, but it also improved their dopamine levels and it improved their adrenaline levels. Now, this is very intriguing because even if you were to be somewhat sleep deprived, if you're indirectly promoting or even directly promoting wakefulness by activating or by having an agonist for PPAR, that could explain why, hmm, when I'm deep in keto or anything like that, like I just feel like I can get by with less sleep. Okay, well, then there are some other studies that kind of looked at the opposite. They looked at antagonists and they found, well, let me explain. This study was published in the journal Neuroscience Research. They found in this case with rats, if they gave them a PPAR antagonist, in this case it was called MK886, a synthetic antagonist, if basically they affected PPAR negatively, it made them have to sleep longer and be more groggy. They were more groggy. They just couldn't recover well. But then again, on the contrary, once they gave them an, an agonist that positively influenced PPAR, they promoted wakefulness and it made it so they could basically get by with less sleep. They weren't directly measuring sleep. They were measuring wakefulness. I am sort of uh, elucidating that, right? I'm pulling that because that's how I see it as someone that's looking at optimization. I try to get fat adapted. I try to say, okay, how do I go periods of time where I do not have carbohydrates so my body gets more efficient at activating PPAR. 
But when you look at some more data surrounding like circadian clock genes, it gets really fascinating because that's all about wakefulness. Okay, that's important, sure, but we also know that ketones themselves kind of make us feel awake and give us energy and fasting itself kind of gives us energy. So we know that, but what about actually helping us out with like restorative sleep? Well, there was a study that was published in the journal PPAR itself that has its own journal. Okay, and it took a look at specific mice that are called knockout mice. What they did in this particular case is they knocked out something called BMAL1. They knocked out a very important circadian clock gene. We have genes that express throughout the course of the day and night to regulate our diurnal rhythms. And some of them are very important, namely BMAL1, PER2, PER3. If you knock out BMAL1, you're really messing up your circadian clock genes. So when they, in this particular PPAR study, they knocked out BMAL1, it lowered their PPAR levels. What does this mean? This means that there is such a finely tuned connection between your fat adaptation and your circadian clock genes. Like so much so that we're just scratching the surface. But in a reciprocal fashion, they found that when PPAR was knocked out, it affected BMAL1. So let me rephrase that. Okay. When BMAL1 was knocked out, PPAR was lower. When PPAR was knocked out, BMAL1 was lower. They definitely have a synergistic reciprocal relationship there. Okay? How do you activate more PPAR? What do we do? Fasting. Periods of exposing ourselves to fat fasting, like doing things like where maybe I'm going to take two or three days where I'm going to have coconut oil and olive oil and try to saturate those PPAR receptors, try to really flip that PPAR switch, right? The more that we can potentially activate the PPAR, the more fat adapted that we get. The more that we are continually activating the PPAR, the more that we are potentially improving that reciprocal signal between PPAR, BMAL1, PER2, PER3, which improves not just the potency and the effectiveness of that gene expression, but the rhythmicity of it too, allowing our actual like, clock genes to go through the rhythmic motion that they should be to potentially regulate sleep patterns but also allow us to get more wakefulness during the day. So really there's two full pieces here. Okay, there's the fact that activating PPAR is much more than just burning fat. It's actually affecting our brain and promoting wakefulness. But then there is the indirect effect on our circadian clock genes. So it's promoting wakefulness and helping us restore sleep patterns. If you ask me, that is the best of both worlds. I'm getting potentially good sleep and I'm more wakeful. So it is not about just trying to get magical ketones to do the thing. In fact, I encourage you as someone that watches this channel to stop just consistently thinking about ketones and getting your ketones as high as you possibly can and think about keeping your body in that fat adapted stage. Whether you get there through uh, ketosis, whether you get there through periodic fasting, or you get there through longer endurance training, it's going to do it too. Okay, I'll digress for one second. I have argued for a long time that one of the reasons I probably activate so much PPAR and why I am so fat adapted could be because I did so much endurance work when I was a young child to the point where my body got so fat adapted and flipped that PPAR switch so early on that I got a lot of benefits of fat adaptation. We are just now seeing that fat adaptation could be playing a role in our alertness, our wakefulness, and possibly even our sleep patterns. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and don't forget to check out Unbun down below in the description.